Hey everybody, glad that you're watching today. We're gonna talk about my thoughts on SUV versus pickup truck. Now I have had a Jeep Liberty and that's how I got this whole thing started. Now I'm in a Nissan Frontier Pro 4X and they're wildly different. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I like in the SUV, some of the things that I like in the pickup truck. All right, so some of the things that I like in the Liberty was the fact that I had a good storage system um, in the Liberty. I custom made one. So in the back seat, you've got a 60-40 split. I took the 60 portion out and I put a bed storage platform in there. Made it out of wood, um, pretty simple. Um, it just opened up in the back and I was able to put all kinds of stuff in there. I think it was about nine inches tall. Um, for the storage area gave me plenty of room for sleeping and it was just long enough I'm 510 that I was able to sleep comfortably um, Where the 60 portion was because I put the cover all the way or the the bed platform all the way to the front seat Underneath there where the seat would have been I got even more space to store stuff It was amazing. I was able to keep all of my overlanding camping gear in the truck at all times and it was great i loved it i loved that it was unique nobody else had a liberty i had a tj front bumper on there um, that the guys from meo welded the tj mounts to because it seems that the frame rails were the same um, distance apart and so the geometry worked perfectly to put a tj bumper on there we put a TJ stubby, I think Smitty built bumper on there, and then I cut the fender so I had great approach angles. I put a limited slip um, rear end in the differential, and uh, and for my wheeling, it was really, really nice. Uh, I loved it. I had an awning from 23-0 and uh, a roof rack, kind of like a little buggy rack that I could store stuff in. It, it was great. Whenever I would show up to camp, I would pull out my cooler, my chair, and a table, and I was ready to go. I was ready to crawl in there and go to sleep. I felt super secure sleeping because it was hard-sided. I'd crack the windows a little bit so that I'd get a little bit of ventilation and I'd get so much condensation. If it was cold, I'd light up, I'd light up, start up the buddy heater and run it for a little while to get it warm, go to sleep. If I woke up in the middle of the night, turn it back on for a little while. You get the picture. It was just easy. Um, so those are some of the things that I loved about it. I never, I never had any issues wheeling it. I only had one, one time where I was kind of stuck and had to get winched out and that was crossing a river on the Oklahoma Adventure Trail and I hit the bank square and I probably didn't have tall enough tires. Um, cause I, I was just running 31s with the limited amount of aftermarket support in the Liberty. There wasn't a whole lot as far as lift kits out there. Some of them were pretty bad. And uh, and so um, I had an old man emu uh, lift on it. And it was okay, but it wasn't great, you know. Um, but yeah, that was the only time in all the wheeling that I did that I really had any issues or needed to be pulled or winched out or anything like that. And... Uh, Overall, it was just a fun, a fun SUV. I really did like the SUV idea of it, of, of a vehicle when it came to overlanding because everything was secure. You know, I didn't have to worry about somebody pulling something out of the back of a pickup truck bed and all that kind of stuff. But it did fail me. They do, they do across the board have wiring issues. Uh, fuel line issues, transmission issues, a bunch of issues. Heater core always goes out in those. I didn't have a heater for two years. Stuff like that. So when it came down to deciding if I was going to repair it or get something new, when I took it to the shop, it was going to be $7,000 to fix that thing. And I was like, I'm done. So I let it go super cheap, told the guy exactly what was wrong with it. He said that's fine. He loved it. Um, he even messaged me later saying that he was wheeling in it and he was shocked he did just as good as the Wranglers he was with, if not better um, than they did on some of the trails. Partly probably because of that limited slip rear end. Made a huge difference. 
Um, so whenever it died, I was on the search for a new vehicle. I thought about going SUV again, getting a 4Runner or uh, you know a Cherokee or a Grand Cherokee or something like that. I started looking and uh, all of those vehicles were going to be older. Um, they were going to have high mileage and so I started looking at pickup trucks. I looked at Chevy trucks. I didn't really look at Ford trucks. I'm just not a Ford guy. Um, I looked at Toyotas and I looked at Nissans. I was surprised to see that for basically the same amount of um, factory options, I could get a Nissan for a lot less than I could get a Tacoma. Now I got the Nissan Pro 4X, comes with a rear locker, mine has leather seats and a great sound system, all those kind of things. Um, the one that I picked up also came with an ARB front bumper, um, Shockworks uh, sliders, and rear bumper. Now Shockworks is no longer in business, which is unfortunate because their products are amazing. I am super happy now um, knowing what I know about the sliders and the bumper that they came with the truck and I didn't have to go try and find them because they're amazing. There's other companies that you can get stuff from now, but um, the aftermarket support isn't what it is for um, the other midsize pickup trucks, but it's not near as bad as it was for the Jeep Liberty. So. There are a lot of options and I'm pretty stoked about that. As I've gone to build it, I put a Lightner rack on it. I've got one of the small gear pods and I've got a Rotopack mount with a Rotopack. So that covers one side of the, uh, the rack. Um, I've now got it on the passenger side because I have a Big Country 4x4 270 ostrich wing awning on the driver's side and I'm super excited about that. That's kind of a new a uh, piece of gear that I have on the truck. Used it in the last camping site and it rained and so it was perfect to be able to have that. I've got a quick pitch uh, rooftop tent um, that Hein with quick pitch sent me and gave me and uh, basically said here's your birthday present and I was like awesome. It had a little bit of chipping on the front corner so the person that originally had it um, said, hey, I'd like to have a new one because, you know, I spent $3,500. I don't want this chipping. It's all aluminum. <laughs> so when he said, hey, do you want this one? I was like, yeah, yes, I do. It's aluminum. I'm not worried about rust or anything like that. Send it my way. So I've been thrilled with that. That has been an awesome tent to own, and I am thrilled uh, that I have it sleeping in. It's been amazing. Um, I have a, a little small air mattress from Haytrip, but, uh, but the mattress alone is really pretty good. I can't really complain about the mattress. The air mattress makes it even that much better. But the truck, the truck's limits are the storage in it. So for my current setup, since I have an open air um, rear rack, bed rack, I do have to worry about people stealing stuff out of the bed of the truck. Now, a deck system would be amazing. I just haven't bit the bullet and spent the fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to get a deck system for the bed of the truck. Um, but that's on my list. I'd love to have one that's on one of my wish lists. Um, another thing that I could do later that I thought about doing is either a camper shell that I could still put the rooftop tent on or do a canopy camper. Now, this is where it's different than an SUV. An SUV, you're kind of limited on being able to put um, drawer system in, some kind of cabinets in, um, but that's about it on the inside. You can put a bed platform, but you're limited to those few things. The tent, you can put a rooftop tent on the top. You have to have a rack to put it on, and that's about it. But with a pickup truck, you have more options. You can do like I have with the open air bed rack um, with a rooftop tent on it and then mount things to the rack um, and still have the back of the pickup truck like a pickup truck. You know, I can still on one side get things from the side, throw the tailgate down, slide things in. If I decided to go camper, that secures what's inside the bed more. Um, but I think if I change, I'm going to go canopy, um, go fast campers, 
AT Overland, um, those type of, of canopy campers um, that open up that you can stand up inside of it is the next direction that I go. Something similar to that. I'm not saying those brands necessarily. I haven't, I haven't put a pot deposit down or anything like that. I'm enjoying the setup that I have now. But that's the flexibility you get with a pickup truck. So those of you out there thinking about doing an SUV or a truck, um, I would steer you to a pickup truck. I think they're more capable. They can um, haul more things because their um, load capacity is usually a lot higher than an SUV. And they're more customizable in the fact that you can um, just run it like a pickup truck, put a rack on it with a rooftop tent, put a camper with a rooftop tent, put a camper and sleep in the camper. Um, and I mean a camper shell, but they also make campers for it. So they've got the, the canopies, um, like I mentioned, but they also have uh, four wheel campers has a camper that fits the frontier. And I think there's probably a couple of other companies out there. It's not as um, wide open as far as the accessories as a Toyota Tacoma um, or even a Chevy Chevy uh, Colorado, um, or even now the Ford Ranger. The Ford Ranger, I think the bed size is about the same as the Nissan, so I think there's a lot of compatible parts that are being made for the bed of a Ford Ranger that actually will work and fit on a Nissan. That's the rumor. So hopefully that's, that's true, and so that makes the options a little bit more. But you just have a lot more custom um, ability with that to change. So like now I'm, I started off with a regular pickup truck bed and a gazelle tent. Now I've got a rack with a rooftop tent. Next will be probably a canopy or a four wheel camper type thing. That's a little bit more livable as far as being able to camp out of the bed. You can't do that with an SUV. You're super limited on what you're able to do with the SUV. And again, I just, I don't think that the four-wheel capabilities, four-wheel drive capabilities, are the same as a pickup truck. Um, you've got body on frame. Um, you've got, uh, like especially with the Nissan, you've got um, a stronger frame than a lot of the other mid-sized trucks because it's actually strong as a full-size frame. It's boxed or, or however. Whatever they do, they make it stronger. Um, so I think there's just a lot more to it. So Although I really like the Liberty and it holds a lot of sentimental value to me and I've joked about getting a commander at some point and building it out like you would a uh, troopy or something like that because I would want to cut the top open just like Mole Leisure uh, did with their Xterra, which is amazing. Their, their Xterra is the best Xterra I've ever seen. Um, what they've done to it is crazy good. Um, I wanted to kind of do that with the Liberty, but I just, there were, there were too many issues with it that it just wasn't a solid enough platform to move forward with. The, uh, the cool thing about Nissan is that they share parts with all the other vehicles, like the, uh, the Xterra and the Frontier, um, you can Titan swap both of those, um, and the Titan is the full size Nissan truck. And uh, so when you tighten swap it, you have a better front end. You can even put the V8 engine in the Frontier or the Xterra. Um, they easily, I say easily, more so than the other vehicles. There's enough room in the engine bay that you can fit the, the V8 engine in and uh, change your wiring harness, a couple other things. And I think you're pretty much good to go. So it's not super difficult to do. It's expensive, but not super difficult. But when it comes down to it, David, I would stick with a pickup truck over an SUV. I think there's just a lot more that you can do with a pickup truck than you can ever do with an SUV as far as customizing it. Um, and one of my favorite things is the mountain hatch uh, tailgate um, table. And my Jeep Liberty had the hatch um, opening in the back, so I didn't have a table. I had to bring a table with me. Um, one of the things that I love about the pickup truck is that you've got a table everywhere you go. Just put the tailgate down and with that mountain hatch um, product, I've got a cutting board and a place to cook and to put stuff on. And it's easier on my knees to crawl up. 
So yeah, hands down, pickup truck. I say that, and if I had a million dollars, I would do the um, X, the the Wrangler JL, and then I would do the American Safari uh, XL extension to it with the, the top that opens up. If I had all the money in the world, I'd do that. But I honestly, if I'm really being honest, and if you're not going to do a lot of heavy off-roading and you're not in super tight areas, a van. A van is the best overland vehicle that you can buy. If you can get a four-wheel drive van um, and build it out correctly, like Primal Outdoors, um, like Chad would live in the van life, then I think those are for livability better. You know, they, they just are. But let's face it, most of us aren't going to live um, on the road. We're just going to be weekend warriors. We're going to do maybe one, two week trips, stuff like that. And if that's the case, then definitely pickup truck. But with a pickup truck, you've got the camper options. So it can be livable and it's badass capability. You know, especially if you want to go full size, you've got the, uh, the Ram. You go get a 2500 Ram and put a you know, some kind of uh, camper on top, you know, the four wheel, the four wheel camper, and you are good to go. Like, good to go. You can put 40s on it, all kinds of craziness. Anyway, those are my two cents. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to put together a few of these in the future where I talk about um, different rigs, different kinds of gear, things like that, but I'm still doing trips. I've got a trip that I'm going to be doing hopefully in the next couple weeks where I'm going to go to another wildlife management area to check out some camping areas that we can use in Oklahoma since we don't have a whole lot of those in Oklahoma is where I'm from. Um, I'm going to be going to the Moore Expo. I'm a storyteller, so be sure that you check on my Facebook page for the uh, links on that to be able to get 10% off your tickets. Um, I think it's just all over 10 is the code that you want to put in. Um, but I'm going to be a storyteller and we're going to have a booth with Overland Radio where I'm going to do live interviews as well from the uh, More Expo. Looking forward to meeting up with some friends. Um, Independence Overland, who I had on the show recently, he's just been named as a storyteller for the More Expo. So super excited. We're going to get to hang out there and, uh, and do some wheeling and camping hopefully before the Expo. Um, so yeah, super excited about all that. Hey guys, if you like the stuff that I'm bringing to you, please like and share, comment on the YouTube page that we've got here. It really helps the algorithms out. I, I know people say that, but it's true. The more you like, the more you comment, the more you share, just increases the numbers and the reach of the channel and it gets to more people. If you really like what I'm doing and you'd like to help out even more, I do have a Patreon page set up. It's all over Overland. Um, just go to Patreon and I'll have a description at the bottom. But for as little as a small cup of coffee a month, you can help out and that just gets me to the next campsite so that I can bring more content to you and review some of these products, show you some great campsites, and uh, just bring you on for the shenanigans because that's what we do here. <laughs> We always get ourselves in some kind of crazy situation. So anyway, um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Whatever you do, make sure that you go all over.